enjoy this morning's message? Huh? Are you listening to it? I'm glad. Uh, yes, I did too. I, I didn't tell you. Uh, however, there was a problem that I ran across that. And that was is that I was worried that you were going to preach what I was going to preach. And I thought, just don't go that far, you know. And you didn't, and so I appreciated that, brother. That was a good, good message, and I did appreciate it, and I'm glad you did as well. Well, uh, when I was, the reason I brought that up, uh, Brother Levi, was that when I was in college, uh, you preacher boys have got to go through preacher's class, and that meant that you've got to preach. And uh, one time... I remember it was kind of interesting because you're given 15 minutes to preach. And there were three guys that were going to preach in our class. And so we all went to chapel. And when we went to chapel, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. You know, they sing and they do this and that and the other things. So the, the guest speaker got up and it was really interesting because he, he, he opened to the book of Jude and he began to preach, really enjoyed it. It was really a good message, you know. God had laid it on uh, everybody's heart, uh, the message that he had. So anyhow, we all came back right after chapel, okay? So right after chapel. And so we came, and uh, class started. And so uh, the first guy got up, and he came behind the pulpit, and he told, uh, told us, sit there and say, oh, open your Bibles to the book of Jude. And so anyhow, he, he got to preach and then everything else, and, and it was good. It really was. And, and you know, when you hear the, hear the Word of God and somebody preaches on, on an, uh, a passage that you're familiar with or what have you, maybe many other people do, but you can always get something new out of the Word of God as it's preached. So anyhow, he got done, and we all, you know, amen, and everything, and he sat down. So the next guy comes up. And, uh, and, and he comes up to the pulpit, and he says, okay, he says, uh, you guys, let's everybody turn to the book of Jude. And so anyhow, uh, he got up there, and he started preaching from the book uh, of Jude as well. You know, there are not that many verses that you can preach on. So anyhow, that was great. Went, uh, he went and sat down, and so uh, I got up, and I, it was my turn. I was uh, last, and so I got up, and I was about, about here, and, and I looked at the, the, uh, the guys, and I says, didn't you enjoy that chapel uh, message? Hey, Amen. What did you think about that first guy? And I don't remember what his name was, but I said, didn't, you re didn't God bless you? But hey, Amen. So I came back here, and I said, you know something? There was a real extra special blessing in the brother that one second. Amen. And so I had to tell him, I says, don't close your Bibles. Turn to the book of Jude. <laughs> I'm dead serious. And, and so that's why, uh, brother, when you were preaching on this, I thought, oh, man. So uh, the, it, was a, it was a good message. One people need to hear. And uh, anyhow, so what I want to do is have us look, turn to Psalm 73, if you would, Psalm 73. My, uh, my, my task tonight is going to be to add, have you, well, for me to ask you this question, and by the time we're done, uh, you give me the answer, is it worth it? Just a very simple question, is it worth it? During your whole lifetime, you, at some point in your life, if you receive Christ as your Savior, uh, hopefully you were enthralled by it. Hopefully it was a good time, a good experience for you. And then you went on and, and you went through the Christian experience. On a daily basis, a weekly basis, you heard a lot of preaching uh, messages, uh, missionaries, giving, and all of this. But all of a sudden, and that's what we're going to look at here in, in, in Psalm 73, but all of a sudden, something happens in your life. 
And I know it did, it, it did for me, but all of a sudden, everything stopped. Um, you used to go to church. I remember in my, in my own case, I got saved. I, I, I came home. My mom wasn't saved. I knew she wasn't saved. Uh, my stepdad, he wasn't saved. My dad wasn't saved. My grandpa wasn't saved. I did not know anybody in my family that knew the Lord. I got saved, and I was excited. It's like tonight. I'm excited uh, tonight about what we're going to look at. But anyhow, I got, I got really excited, and I talked to my mom, and I tried to tell her about Christ, and, and, and I mean, we'd spend hours. And she got sick and tired of me. So anyhow, one night she uh, called me up. We were, in, uh, we were in Wisconsin. I think it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were in Wisconsin. I was in the ministry there. Uh, Mom was in Denver, and she called up, and she says, John, you'll never guess what. Did I tell you about this? Anyhow, and I says, no, Mom, with you, I have no idea. And so she said she got saved last night, that night. And so, yeah, yeah, so this was really great. So I got ready over the phone to sit there. Well, amen. And I stopped myself and I said, Mom, let me ask you a question. Who, for whose sake did you get saved? And she told me, for Jesus' sake, for the, for the praise of the gospel. And then I said, well, amen. And so it completed, it completed a, a mission that I had in my life. Um, you know, uh, Mom, before she died, uh, she was, uh, yes, I am going to get to it, but th this all goes along. But anyhow, b before uh, Mom died, uh, as I said, I was pastoring uh, in, in w Wisconsin, and uh, she came to visit me. I'd never had, I'd never had my father uh, out for a, uh, for a, uh, to hear me preach. Never had my mom out there to hear me preach. And so Mother's Day, of all of the time, Mother's Day came along, and mom and my stepdad were going to come to church. And I thought, oh. So I... Up there, this was, this was a pastor's seat, and that was nobody's seat and, and everything. But I was sitting here, and uh, I was going to record my mom. I asked her if she would give her testimony. And it was kind of an interesting thing. But I sat down, and I had my little, uh, my little uh, go tape going, you know. And so uh, one of the things that she said was, uh, she said, once... John stopped nagging at me. Then I began to think about the things that he said. And I thought to myself, if that's all it took, <laughs> I would have stopped a long time before. But, but the point is that all of the things that had gone on in between the time I was saved and the time my mom got, uh, my mom got saved, uh, lots happened. But here's, here's the thing, there was a time in my life when, there, there was a time in my life when something happened, it was with, a, 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 with my girlfriend, and, um, and anyhow, we uh, had a situation, um, she broke up with me, and that made me very disturbed. And so it was during this time after the breakup that I thought to myself, well, if, if she isn't going to stick around and she doesn't love me after uh, all this time I put into it, uh, I, I stopped going to church. I started blaming God. You know, and I, you may say to yourself, well, that's stupid. Yeah, you're right. But usually backsliding is stupid. You know, when you get away from the Lord, when you stop fellowshipping with the Lord, whatever way it might be, you stop going to church, you stop fellowshipping with other Christians, you just sit there and say, I'm not going to listen no matter what he says. 
whatever your case is or whatever condition or, or variation of being backslidden as a Christian, don't do it. Now, you're at, you're at Psalm, you're in Psalm 73, right? Amen? Okay. Let me get there. It opens up with this, this salutation, you might call it. You know, like an opening of a letter. And Asaph, the psalm of Asaph, and he says, truly God is good. Amen. That's great. Some of the simplest things the Bible says about God are tremendous. I think last week we were talking about, the uh, pastor was talking about, but some of the very simplest things, God is good. God is truth. God is life. God, the very simplest things. And here he says, Asaph says, truly God is good to Israel. Before I keep going, let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for these who are here. We pray, certainly, dear God, for our pastor, for his family, that they might uh, have an excellent time together, that this be a, a pleasurable time and a blessing uh, for them. Father, for us, I pray that you would open our hearts, let the Holy Spirit work through your word tonight. May this be a, a glorious time. May we go forth from this place saying, I was glad that I said that you said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord, and I'm glad, dear God, I'm here. So, Father, take this, take your word and, and uh, run it through your servant tonight and be a blessing to your servants. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, is it worth it? Of all of the things that you've gone through in your Christian life, of everything, you know, and your ups and your downs, it, would you say that it's worth it? Amen. Okay, good. Right answer. <laughs> right answer. But I want to have you think. If you look at this, if you look at this passage, I was in my I was in my Bible reading through the Book of Psalms, and this. This passage just, man, it wowed me when I came down to it. You know, it's, it just wowed me. Now, here's what wowed me. Let's look at it. He says, truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. And I thought, yes. But watch what happens. He says in verse 2, but as for me. Now, usually when somebody says, but, your mind immediately begins to go backwards and think, well, you know, you're, you're a student and you put all your energy into your thesis or your test or what have you, and the teacher goes around and says, Johnny, that was good, but. And, you know, you're expecting this pat on the back, and then the teacher sits there and says, yeah, but good, but you could have done better. I know. You know, so oftentimes we don't want to hear, but, whether it's coming from God's word or whether it's coming from somebody else, because it always has that distinctive feeling that something after the but is wrong or is going to be wrong. And watch what, it's, what he says. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. I can understand that. I can appreciate Asaph, you know who Asaph is? Asaph is uh, his, uh, his grandfather and his father. They're in the tribe of Levi. Levi, they're servants. They were servants to David. They were servants to King Solomon. They served in the temple. 
And as they, they were musicians. I appreciate our, 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 our musical program here. They were musicians, and he was the head, there were three of the head musicians in the, in, in the, in the temple worship. And uh, he was, it, it, is, it is said that he was uh, in charge of the school of music. And so you gotta you gotta understand his position. Now you wouldn't think to yourself, well, uh, you know, service uh, music. You know, I can sing. Well, yeah, but can you lead? I can sing, but not as well as you can. I can sing. I knew a guy who uh, had just gotten saved. And it, it, Jim Croteau was his name, and he had just he had, he had gotten saved. He was a new Christian. Then he found out that he had throat cancer, and so he was doing all of this. You should have seen Jim when he was when you're uh, when when, uh, when Ken has everybody stand up, right? Well, whoever was leading the singing there, we'd all stand up. And boy, we would sing a song. It was just a pleasure, just a blessing. And you should have seen Jim Croteau. He had the biggest smile on his face. And he sung out. And he wasn't the best. But he was singing for the Lord. Now, a little bit later on, it was time for Jim to go in for his surgery. And I often wondered what the last words that he would have said from his vocal cords. Knowing Jim, he probably said, well, praise the Lord anyway. Anyhow, Jim came back to church and he had one of these little frog things or whatever it is that, that they use to try and, and gutturally speak with. But I remember sitting in church behind Jim and you know something after having gone through what he went through? They sat there and said, turn to page number so-and-so. And we all stood, and old Jim, he started singing that song. And you know what? Nothing came out of his mouth. But boy, you could sure hear it in your ears. He was smiling from one ear to the other. He wanted to praise God, and he wanted to glorify the king, whether he had, whether he had a voice or not. And you know, that's what my hope is, is that you're that kind of a Christian today. That if, if something happens in your life and God takes the best things, the, the sweetest thing in your life away from you, that you can sit there and like this man smile. I'm not saying you're not going to hurt, but, but to sit there and smile and sit there and say, my, the Lord is good. So that was kind of a background in, in, in my life, but it says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slipped. He declares God is good, and then he turns around and says, but. And here's a man that walked certainly with God, he heard every message or every psalm that David had written, probably. He sat down and led everybody else in their, in their uh, praise to God. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that he, he, he knew the Lord. But here's my point, look, in verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, either are they plagued like other men. You see, he looked at them and envied them because of what he saw through them, or in them. I want to have you think to yourself, is it really worth it if all of a sudden in your life something happens, and I cannot get into everything, you know, 
But what can happen to you in your life? What can happen in your life that may make you sad or upset or disturbed or somebody says something I do not like? What do I do? When I fall into sin, when I want to sin, what do I do? Well, here's, here's a test. I'm going to read a verse and you finish the word. You don't have to do it verbally if you don't want to. In the beginning, God created the, the heaven and the earth. Okay. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, corrupt are they, and they have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth. All right. Uh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is, is good. I will set no wicked thing before mine. Make a joyful. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, the, the, the publican standing far off would not lift, his eye, lift, lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You're doing very well. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Okay, and lastly... Lastly, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right. Now, what I am suggesting tonight, and as I looked at this passage of Scripture, it just drew me back to this thought. What can I do? What do I do when somebody is trying to call me into weakness? If, uh, you know, like uh, when, I, when I was younger, I, I, try, I tried smoking one time when I was a boy, a little boy. My mom smoked, dad smoked. Okay, so I had an excuse. Not really, but. But anyhow, so I was going along the road one time, and I saw one down there, a little butt, and I picked it up. Now, if I had been saved, what should I have done? Sit there and say, not worth it. My life for Christ is not worth being ruined because somebody out there sees this little boy picking up a cigarette and putting it in his mouth, and they say, and you say, you're a Christian. Or it may be that you're in a store and all of a sudden, like we're seeing today, you know, everybody's breaking into stores for no reason. And they go into a store and all of a sudden they sit there and look off. Nobody will sit there and see this. And they think to themselves, I can take that. It's small. I can put it in my pocket and nobody will know. But as a Christian... Uh, especially even, even as, uh, you know, younger kids are more, uh, more uh, pliable to trying to deal with small things they can put in their pocket or what have you. But as a Christian, I ought to look at that and say in my heart, no, I'm not going to ruin my life over something like that. Okay, simple illustrations, but look at what happened here. Look at what happens it says, for there are no bands. First of all, uh, we said in verse 3, for I was envious at the foolish. What do you as a Christian have in any way, shape, or form to be envious of anything? What, what do you have to be envious over? I, I, I don't know. Who shall, but Bible sits there and says, who shall ascend into the, the hill of, uh, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? 
The Bible says, He that hath a clean heart, a, a clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. You see, God's looking for a clean heart. That's what he says. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of clean heart. But it wasn't so with Asaph. He admits in his heart, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And I, I mean to tell you that this is this hits home. Because as we always hear from uh, evangelists and missionaries and preachers that preach, and goodly so, rightly so, you know, that, uh, that sin comes in any form, or it can come in any form. And it can come at you at the, at the least, uh, the, the time you least expect it. I was envious at the foolish. That should have told him right off that there is a problem here, that he knew better. Just like what I was challenging you, these passages of Scripture, you know them. I'm not asking, you notice I didn't ask you what verses they were. Anybody know them? (laughs) But the thing is, is you, you know them, and, and when you're tempted, when you're tried, when Satan really gets down and tries to pull you away over the dumbest things, I'm, I might add, what do I do? Well, if we look at what, if, if we look at what happened to, uh, to Asaph, and, and you observe all of the things... That, uh, that he was uh, tested with. Notice down at verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly. I was envious at the foolish. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. As we, as we learned this morning, and this is one of the things that I was going to bring out, is the fact that there is a prosperity gospel. That's what we were talking about, this, what brother was talking about this morning. You see, and, and it is going all around, and especially in the Christian circles. But listen, this was Asaph. A child of God serving in the temple day and night in the family of Levi. And he turns and becomes envious at the foolish when they saw the prosperity of the wicked. I hope. You, you, don't, you don't look at some of these guys that were mentioned. I, hey, let me ask you something. How much money does it cost you to get into church? Well, for one of these guys, churches, I had learned that you have to actually go and get a ticket and pay money to get in. You know how much money it cost to get a front row seat in that church? Some of these... Some of these uh, Ticketrons or what have you, you can get these tickets uh, to this church service at Ticketron, $1,000 or more. Anybody want to sit up here? I'll take your donation. You see what I'm getting at? And that's what I'm saying, or that's what, uh, that's what uh, Brother Levi was saying. A prosperity doctrine. You want to uh, be, be prosperous. You want to have good life. You want to good, have, bless, uh, have blessings. Give more to the Lord. I, when I saw that, I could not believe it. Never in my life would I have believed somebody was charging tickets to go to church. So anyhow, that's what he's, that's where he's at. 
So we look at the situation that, that he had. You'll find out that your, the situations in life will pull you. Illustration that uh, pastoral counseling, they always talk about the, 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 uh, the diagram for a husband and wife and God. And the closer that you each get towards God, you get closer towards what? Each other. And that's very sound, and it's nothing new. I've heard that several times before. But my, my point is here that if you are going to live a, uh, I don't want to say successful, uh, if your life is going to be run according to the precepts and principles of God, you have to have, even to such as are of a clean heart. And so we have to ask ourselves, here is a man who began to follow, here's a, 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 a a musician in the court of the Lord that's following. He's looking at men. He's looking at what they have in all of these things. And he begins to envy them. I don't know. Well, anyhow, bad choices make good stories, one has said. But the obstruction to a clean heart are innately with your your the uh, your eyes, your hearing, all of the all of the senses that you have, uh, Satan, because you use any of them. It usually usually comes about in the way of violating God's word. Proverbs fifteen nine says, "The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord." but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Amen. In the 31st in Psalm 37:31 just a little bit back here in chapter 37 and verse 31 it says the law of his God is in his heart notice None of his steps shall slide. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. So that was the problem in his life, and it'll be the problem in your life too. As long as the truth of God's word is not dwelling as it should in your life. If when you run across something that, that says to you, man, if I had only been first, if I had only this or only that, it's at times like that when the simplest things come into your life to try and get you away from your fellowship with the Lord, from your, heart, uh, your, your, your heart's relationship with God, what you do. And this is what I would suggest. Uh, what I would suggest is you take a verse, any verse, and you try to think to yourself, okay, the Lord God is good. He wants me, he wants me to cheat on a test. He wants me to help this person out. He uh, he says that this is going to be good for me if I just slight on that a little bit. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And now, here, here's the thing. You can't, you can't look at two things at once and concentrate. You can't look at this, this, uh, this person that's trying to uh, get you to uh, uh, fall into sin and start thinking on the Lord. Because here, as a Christian, your mind is going, that's not right. You're saying to yourself, something's wrong. I may not be able to, uh, to pin it. But when that starts happening, pull any verse. Like I said, I was just 
trying to show you some verses that you know. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I will set no wicked thing before my eye and my heart, my eyes. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Be merciful unto me, a sinner. Man, you can't think about being a sinner and say to yourself, Well, God, uh, I, I, want, I want to sin. Uh, this thing, I'm not sure whether it's right or wrong, but you see, think on God's word. And I'm just saying, for at the beginning, it doesn't have to be on something. You don't have to drill yourself with, oh, uh, this is the problem. This is the area uh, of my life that I'm... Uh, being, uh, I'm zeroing in on, and so let me look and, and get 20 verses so I can study them. Just pick a verse, okay? That's all I mean. God is love. See if that ties into the sin that you're trying to, you're going to fall into. Anyhow, so how, what happens? What happened to Asaph in particular? So he goes through all of the things that he knows about these guys, and yet he is envious of them. But I want to look at verse 11. It says, And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Oh, boy. Now, I'd hope that if you were sitting in a restaurant and eating and something like that, and somebody next to you started, uh, started saying things about your God, your Lord, and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't favorable, you know. And if they said something like that, I'd hope you'd have something to say back at them. says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world and increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain, washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. You see what, what, what's happening in the obstruction that he's having in his lifetime, it, he's having what I'd call consternation, alarm, horrificness. All of a sudden, after going through all this and realizing, in fact, that he'd been envying after all of this, then he comes to himself and he says, I have cleansed my heart in vain. He says to himself, what have I done with my life that I get to, my, get to this point and all of a sudden, poof, I let it all fly. Was it wrong that he had cleansed himself? Was it wrong that he had washed his, his, his hands in, in, and, Lord, that he had done all of the good things and he, that he had gone to the house of worship? Was it, was it wrong? Well, the way he looked at it is the fact that this is what happened to him. And boy, what, is it, what does it say for, for what does it say what, what happened before? Um, let's see, where is it? But, no. Until, yeah, here it is, verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood. Hey, what do you do? What do you do when your heart is down, when things seem to be falling apart? whether it's at home, school, family, church. What do you do? Do you back away and you run from that? It's going to cause me pain. Do you flee? That's what the heart, that's what the world says. Hey, just, just get rid of it. Get dump it. 
But he said, until I went into the sanctuary of, the, uh, of God, then understood I their way. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places and cast them down into, the, into, into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one, awa one awakeneth, so, O Lord, when thou wakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and it was pricked to the reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast. Boy, do you think that he was chastising himself? He didn't need you. To tell him what was wrong, God had convinced him that was absolute, that's sin. When you get that out of your heart, you get your heart right. You see, it starts, he started out, uh, my steps have well, well nigh slipped. Well, little did he realize the fact that the ones that he was envying are the ones that God had set to have their feet slip. Nevertheless, verse 23, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, and God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from, uh, from, from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Sin, I, I got it down here, sin should finally lead us to repentation. It's not really a good word, but I made it up. Like salvation, uh, you know, uh, this and that and the other thing. You know, well, this is repentation. He ought to bring you to repentance. And you know, for everyone that has a sin, God has an answer. So I, I'd invite you tonight to say with the psalmist, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And say to yourself, uh, have I, am I cleansed in the blood of the Lamb? Is there anything between me and the Savior? How is my heart today? If it is clean, praise God, let it be. And let it continue to be. If it isn't, if there's an area of your life that maybe uh, that God, the Holy Spirit has touched upon an area in your life where you say, I'm, I know that that wasn't right. I don't think so. Maybe I ought to talk to somebody about it. I, in the invitation, I'd encourage you to, to do that tonight. Just uh, either get down on your knees, whatever. Maybe God has, has touched you about but ask myself, is my heart clean before God? What do I do if something happens? Look to God's word. Look to God and live.